The Artemis 1 mission has been postponed by NASA, and I want to show you why. Let's take a look at the weather. William Harwood from CBS Space News posted this yesterday on Twitter. 5 p.m. Eastern Time update from the National Hurricane Center shows Tropical Depression 9 tracking slightly north and west of the 11 a.m. prediction. Landfall now expected just south of Tampa. Kennedy Space Center remains in the cone, meaning that this um, tropical storm, this depression right now, is headed towards NASA in some form. And I want to show you a little bit more information about that. Here we go. This is from NOAA, NOAA.gov. Ian is expected to produce heavy rainfall, flash flooding, and possible mudslides in areas of higher terrain, particularly over Jamaica and Cuba. Limited flash and urban flooding is possible with rainfall across the Florida Keys and Florida Peninsula uh, through mid next week. So hurricane conditions are possible in the Cayman Islands by early Monday, with tropical storm conditions possible by, possible by late Sunday. And tropical storm conditions are possible in Jamaica on Sunday. So if this is heading towards Florida, if this is heading towards NASA in any way, the SLS rocket could possibly be in danger. Now let's take another uh, little peek at the bottom here. Ian is forecast to move near or over western Cuba and approach the west coast of Florida Peninsula at or near major hurricane strength, major hurricane strength, early next week. So NASA wanted to launch this thing early next week. Right? They wanted to launch a 322-foot-tall rocket around the moon and back, but this hurricane is standing in the way, and NASA knows this. So they're sending out the troops to get the rocket back to the vehicle assembly building. And I'll show you what the actual um, tropical storm is like. Tropical storm, uh, tropical cyclone. This is the speed that's going to be at. Um, with maximum sustained winds between 39 and 72 miles per hour, 34 to 63 knots. And then a hurricane, tropical cyclone with maximum sustained winds of 74 miles per hour or higher in the Western North Pacific. Hurricanes are called typhoons. So up to 73 plus possible miles per hour for this storm. So the SLS is in danger. So let's take a look at what NASA has to say about this. Teams are monitoring the weather. This is from yesterday. Uh, while protecting option for Artemis 1 launch, they wanted to launch it on Tuesday, September 22nd or 27th, and they have a 70-minute launch window to launch this giant thing at about 11.37 a.m. Eastern time. Um, they say that there's a tropical depression in the Caribbean Sea while in parallel continuing to prepare for a potential launch opportunity for the uh, SLS rocket managers are initiating activities on a non-interference basis to enable an accelerated timeline for rolling back to the vehicle assembly building, the VAB, to protect the rocket should it be necessary. So what they do, they get all the teams in place. They need to move this gigantic rocket. It's like basically like moving the Statue of Liberty, but they have to move it down a road and they have to move it back to the vehicle assembly building. Discussions about whether to remain at the launch pad or roll back to the VAB are ongoing and based on the latest forecast predictions. Now, just this morning, just this morning, NASA released a statement um, according to uh, according to the uh, the the weather that's ha happening. Um, Artemis One managers wave off September twenty seventh launch, preparing for rollback. So they looked at the weather and they said, "This doesn't look good. We might put this rocket in danger." If we keep it out there at the pad and we really don't have to launch it on a specific day right away, there's a little bit of caveat there, but in order to prepare the rocket for movement, they have to get the, uh, the mover back, right? So they have to roll it back to the vehicle assembly building. So here's what they say. While continuing to watch the weather forecast associated with the tropical storm, Ian, during a meeting Saturday morning, teams decided to stand down and preparing for the Tuesday launch date and to allow them to configure systems for rolling back to the space launch, back to the space launch system rocket and Orion spacecraft to the vehicle assembly building. Engineers deferred a final decision about the roll to Sunday, September 25th, to allow additional data gathering and analysis. If Artemis 1 managers elect to roll back, it would begin late Sunday night or early Monday morning. So, the agency is taking a stepwise approach to its decision-making process to allow the agency to protect its employees by completing a safe role in time for them to address the needs of their families. So it's not just about the rocket here either. 
NASA cares about their employees. They care about the, the families and the people that actually built this rocket and are going to launch this rocket. So they need to put it on the crawler, right? The crawler goes like one mile an hour and they have to move it miles away. So it takes basically a whole night, most of the day or a whole night to get this thing from the pad all the way back to the vehicle assembly building but they have to prepare it. They have to safe the vehicle. Um, they have to put the crawler underneath the vehicle, move the SLS back to the vehicle assembly building once all the crews are there. And they have a, somebody who drives this thing too. So earlier today, they moved the crawler out to the pad just in case, right? They don't want to wait to the last minute because you never know with these storms what's going to happen. Noah has a pretty good idea about what's going to happen, but you never know where this thing's going to, you know, if it's going to change direction, if it's going to get more powerful, things like that. So get everything in place well before the time that the storm hits. And then if you can, you'll move the launcher and the, uh, or sorry, the uh, SLS and the, uh, you know, the, the crawler back to the vehicle assembly building. So it could take NASA all day to do that. Um, so we're going to see on Sunday, um, early Sunday morning, um, you know, whether they're going to be moving this thing back to the vehicle assembly building. Now I want to show you some other tweets from William Harwood here. Uh, SLS, the next launch opportunity opens 1017 and closes 1031. It's not yet known whether the SLS can remain at the pad with NASA's current Eastern Range battery waiver. Battery servicing, if required after the current launch period closes, would require rollback to the VAB. So if the batteries and the servicing doesn't go well after this current launch period closes, they have to go back to the VAB anyway. So... Do they do that now and service them while the storm is going on, you know, uh, during this whole time? Or do they leave it out there and wait till after the storm, wait for everything to blow over? And then the next launch period opens 1017 and closes 1031. So the current launch period closes 10 or 104. NASA Early Reserve 10-2 is a backup date, but it's not yet known if that remains a viable option, but the window launch window on 10-3 is just 59 minutes long, two minutes on 10-4. So they have a sort of a, a balancing act to do here, and they have to make sure that the people are safe. They have to make sure that the rocket is safe, and they also have to make sure that those batteries are okay. So if they have to service those anyway, I think it might be best for SLS to go back to the VAB. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in the in the comments. I know there are a lot of people worried about the SLS at this point, and I know some people are uh, down there in Florida, so please stay safe. Please stay safe. If you're in this community, if you're in the space flight community, um, you know, just please just do everything you can to keep you and your family safe at this point. So I'll have more news as it happens on the channel, so stay tuned. Thanks, everybody. Please subscribe. Uh, hit the like button. Really helps out the channel a lot. And check out starshipshirts.com for SpaceX and NASA-related merch. All right, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.